Well, sweetheart, we had a good run. That's for you. So what's next? Oh, gotta love the sounds of horses. That's the I love you, let's make babies noise, believe it or not. What do we want to do next? The Toro with the sweet three speed, high deluxe mower, or buried way in the back, the Cub. Greetings, folks. Welcome back to the Tractor Fella Show, where we know nothing about tractors. This is a Toro 3521. A friend of mine passed this on to me. Thank you. You know who you are. When I received it, it was in running condition, but it had a leaky carburetor. Well, I had my first video failure. This guy I found on the side of the road. Somebody cut the end of the crank off. The other side, the crank was mushroomed over. Thought I could finagle something together, but it just didn't work. So we'll put it on the shelf and you never know. Maybe a sibling will come along and we can hack some things together and make it run. First of all, my Crocs were nowhere to be found, probably because my wife is wearing them. So I went ahead and borrowed hers. My buddy said it seemed to run fine, except it was leaking gas. What do we have here? Toro, 3521, three speeds forward, one speed reverse, ignition on and off, drive handle, check, auger handle, check, auger direction, check, check two, oil, rub, dip, decent, not overfilled, not excessively black, okay, now I'm just talking to myself, I should probably continue on because again, I'm going to lose my audience. They go. Primer. Check. Fast. Slow. Off. Does it spin? Oh yeah. We got a spinner. Choke. Ooh. Multi-notch choke for your convenience. Adjustable chute. Electric start. Oh boy. Check. Build plate. What do we have here? Model 38035 serial number, the Toro Company, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Fuel tank. Dry as a bone. Tire with wheel chain. Other tire with chain. Auger with possible rotation. Shall we check for spark? What do we have? Lots of carbon. From our little book that we read a while ago, lots of carbon means a rich condition or possibly oil burning. So I fixed this mower, picked it up off the side of the road, surprise, surprise, and uh, it needed basic carburetor cleaning. So I sell them this mower. They love it, it works, it's self-propelled. The missus is older and she needs a self-propelled. Uh, the mister has some type of health ailments. So they say, hey, I've got a snowblower we could really use some work on too. And I say, okay, well, you know, let me take it home and I will let you know what I think for a cost. So I bring it home. It's same thing, you know, it's sat all summer. Carburetors all gummed up, clean it up, bring it back. And they said, sure, come on in, you know, great. Well, I go into the house and he's all attached to IVs and stuff like that. And it turns out he's on dialysis a lot of the time. And I've got a price in my head of like 50, 60 bucks, right? And if you go to any place that's a name brand place and get your snowblower fixed, it's like 150 bucks an hour or something completely ridiculous. I'm not certified. I'm just doing it to have some fun. Long story short, I bring it back, I see the condition of the people, and I'm like, you know what? Ten bucks would be great. <laughs> it's just one of those things, you know what I mean? Kind of breaks your heart a little bit, but at the same time, when you see how happy they are that you're helping them out, it kind of warms your heart, you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. I, I am no saint. <laughs> I am no saint whatsoever. 
but I guess I try to help out when I can. Might as well be brand new. I gotta turn the lights off. Don't get scared now. Here we go. the spark you want to see if we can get a quick shard out of this thing i just say shard okay well that's going to be our new phrase let's go for the first shard and yes it has top end lubricant that is a lot spark plug engaged a little bit of throttle ignition on and go She's still a runner. I will note, she does smell like oil and ether. I'm definitely no Puddin from Puddin's Fab Shop when it comes to the dirt daubers, but look at those. We're gonna have to take this off and clean those out so we get some adequate cooling. So we know we have a carburetor issue. And that carburetor issue being the fact that it leaks. So. Carburetor is under here. Let's go ahead and pull it off. What a handsome little carburetor you are. We're going to go ahead and waste a little bit of gas. We're going to pour some in the tank because we know the tank is dry and clean. And we're going to see where it comes out. Let's get this little, little fuzzy out of your way. I'm going to put some gas up in the tank here. Keep your eyes out. Let me know where it goes. I'm getting at least 25% of the gas actually in the tank. Should probably use a funnel next time. Do we see any leaks anywhere? Something that can help identify a drip or two. It's a nice paper towel. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna apply a small, a small amount of compressed air to the gas tank to see if we can find our leak. All right, so I have like three PSI on my shop air here. Nothing. All right, folks, there it is. Not a good time to try the electric starter. I can tell you that it, gas is just pouring out of there. So the question is, is it our shutoff valve? Let's shut it off. That is not a good location. Did we stop? No, we're still leaking. Good news, we found our fuel leak. Bad news, that's gonna be a big waste of gas. All right, let's see if we can rip this tank off before we lose all the gas. Here we go. Nope. Should have known. 10 millimeter. Oh, I gotta take off that top plate. Oh no, those are cylinder head bolts. Ugh. Now YouTube's gonna be really mad. Because I gotta torque them to spec. Not sure if we can do this or not, but let's give it a shot. Oh yeah. All right, just ripping that tank right off. Big question, is it the shutoff valve? I think the first thing we need to do is take that out of there. And then we can test the valve itself to see if it's leaking. I'll just go ahead and take these off completely. All right, all right. I said it again. All right, we're ready to go. All right. There it is. Welcome back, folks. It is the next evening. Here is our possible culprit. I'm going to give it a little puff of air on the outside. Feels like it might be bleeding down. Right now it's shut off. I'm going to get a little dropper and put a couple drops of water in there and see if... They come out. And by a couple of drops of water, I'm talking straight up gas. It has already dropped 
and level. And you see in there, that little dribble that's inside that hole used to be up to the very top. Where are you coming out? It's definitely leaking. And I don't believe it's coming out here. I think we're losing it on the back side. Yeah, see how it just got wet back there again? After I already wiped it down. Yeah, see. Wet here again. Okay. Well, let's take it apart. Maybe there's a simple O-ring on the inside that we can disassemble. Oh, yeah, it's all coming out of the packing material. I'm assuming there's some type of packing in there. I mean, the very simple solution would be to replace this, but holy moly. One, two, three. Okay, there we go. Give it the CPR move and broke it loose. Focus where I need you to focus. What in the world is going on? Sorry, you probably missed all that, but it looks like there's just a little rubber O-ring in the back there. Maybe we can just dig it out and flip it over. If not, maybe I have a little teeny O-ring somewhere. Probably not. We're back again for another new day. I believe we left off. We were gonna try to pop that O-ring out of there and maybe just turn it around. Kinda looks chewed up, but maybe we can get it out. Oh yeah, it's gonna come out in pieces. If it even comes out at all. Yeah, making a little headway. And by a little, I mean a little. There we go. I don't think we're flipping this one over. How about you guys? Pretty sure flipping wouldn't really matter in this case. You can see it's all cracked. Looks like a dry rotted tire, except in little itty bitty form. All right, well, let's see what kind of O-rings I don't have. Okay, junk drawer. I told you guys. For those of you that have seen the home light chainsaw, told you I'd get some duck bill check valves. If you want to watch that episode, boop. You can check it out right up there. How about this bag of disaster? There's a little green guy right there. That is actually the seat for a needle, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe we can stretch that out. We'll leave that off to the side for a just in case option. I wonder if I cut a piece of fuel line and crammed it on there. Also a possibility. I swear I had a bag of... Oh, ah. What? And we could also just replace the valve. <laughs> okay. I do not believe anything in here is small enough. Nope, these are way too big. Let's go with the green one here. Will it stretch? No, that's just too small. Fuel line. Is it big enough to go over there and stretchable? Yes. Get roughly the same thickness. That is 100% not flush cut. And it's gone. Ultimately, we'll end up replacing the valve, but I would just like to know if this is even a possibility. Okay, well, it's on there. I can feel some resistance, which to me means it's doing something. Okay, yes, I spilled it everywhere. So what we're gonna do is dry up everything. I'm gonna let it sit there for a little bit. Oh man, is it coming out the front? Looks like it, looks like I fixed the back. Now the front's no good. Q-tip, check. PB blaster for a little cleaning agent. Check. Overdrive. Check. 
actually that surface looks pretty rough. See those bumps in there? I don't know how this thing's sealed in the first place. Maybe it's, I don't know. Looks like we might have had multiple issues. One, the sealing surface for the outlet. And one, the packing for the backside. Okay, a little more gas. Where are we coming out of? The front. Okay, well, this thing's jacked. Is this getting ridiculous? Yep. Final result, a beautifully polished shutoff valve. <laughs> oh, geez, what is my life coming to? But you know what? Half the fun is experimenting, in my mind. The rest of you that disagree have most likely already left by now. Either way, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Are we still leaking? Yep. I'm surprised, honestly, with that thing polished up like a bullet. I would have figured it would have contacted a new area on that seat, but if I had to guess, it's just, yeah, you can kind of see the damage. There's damage on the inside of that. That's not going to happen. So, it was fun while we tried. I guess I'm going to do the right thing. Ah, how boring, and just replace it. <laughs> As of right now, I've had 75% luck with these. The last 25%, uh, they leak externally. So, this is an Amazon purchase. You'll see that there were reviews. Had pretty good reviews overall, but there are some reviews that they leak. So, if you buy them, don't be surprised. I'm going to title this episode, The Shutoff Valve of a Lifetime. I can't give up. I don't know why, but I cannot give up. Where's my freaking wrench? I just had it. Okay, where'd my wrench go? Oh, for goodness sake. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. We're going to spin it up. Gonna bring it in here, nice and easy, and we're just gonna gently boop, bottom it out a couple times, and probably make it way worse. But what the heck? What do we have to lose? A junk valve. That's what we have to lose. Did that polish up? Kinda looks like it did. All right, we're cleaned off. Could it be true? <laughs> Could it be true? Is it possible? Oh my gosh. So we're just going to wait. I'll check it tomorrow. If there's no stains on the paper towel and the gas is gone, I'll assume to most of it's evaporated. I am excited. On another note, Apollo. Nighttime itchies. Gotta have the nighttime itchies. No, 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 don't beat me up because I'm not scratching you. Well, I let it sit 24 hours. I don't see anything. Well, since the gas didn't leave any traces of anything, we're gonna use a little PB. If it leaks out, it should leave a trail. Some breadcrumbs, so to speak. In the meantime, We've completely forgotten about what we're actually here to do, which is get that snowblower running. So, again, 
I'm going to do the right thing and put this on there. This is the original line that was on there. Yeah, that's barely even long enough to do anything. So we're going to replace that. Same size? Oh, yeah. We're already serving the curve. I want to make this a little longer than the original one so that we can kind of bend it around a little bit since we're not doing a 90 degree surgical scissors. These little guys were already on there, so we'll go ahead and reuse that. How do you guys like your, your tab pointing? In the direction of the fuel flow? Yeah, we'll do that. Why not? Let's see if we can pull this off or if we we're going to have to trim our line. I think I'm going to rotate this 180. A little easier to access. Bam. Reinstallation complete. Is it going to be too much line? Yep, that presents a problem. Pretty sure that heat shield's not supposed to be like that. That's better. We have two choices. One, we can shorten this line up and that might help us out. Or two, we fix that original shutoff. Suppose we could test the actual function. Open sesame. It flows when we want it to. See, I see wetness here. I think it's coming out of these threads now. <laughs> Jeez. If it's not one spot, it's the next. And pardon my coke nail, by the way. Yeah, look at that guy. I don't believe that plumber's tape is resistant to gasoline, but we're going to go ahead and use plumber's tape. Oh man, look at that. Look at that beautifully polished shutoff valve. Holy cow. <laughs> hey, check it out. This is plumber's tape that's red. I wonder if that means ultra awesome chemical resistance. No, dude, it does not. You're an idiot. That's okay. Let's try it anyway. For the life of me, I cannot remember. Wait, what? Uh, I cannot find any engine information on this little guy. So I think I'm going to look up the model and see if I can figure out what engine came with this. Search Toro 38035. Parts tree has always been helpful for me. So 38035, Toro snow thrower. We know from our build tag, we are above serial number 7000001. So, let's see here, auger, carburetor, engine assembly, hey, look at that, engine Tecumseh, model H354598R, well, look at that, you can get a, uh, you can get a, a snowplow for the front, isn't that fancy? Did a search for the H35 head bolt torque specs. I found this, Tecumseh H35 engine specifications. Tecumseh H35 engine. Looks familiar-ish. I think it's a three and a half horsepower, so there we go. Three and a half horsepower. Got a steamy 7.3 pound-feet of torque. And there it is. Cylinder head bolts, 16.5 foot-pounds, 22.5 newton meters. Screenshot complete. Time to evict the dirt daubers. I'm gonna break it up and then I'll vacuum it out because we do not want it going down. Our cylinder head holes there. Interesting little creatures, aren't they? Make a nest out of mud and then babies come out. Never been stung by a dirt dauber, mud dauber, whatever the heck you want to call it. They seem somewhat docile. But I also don't mess with them, because I'd rather not experience that. Anyone freaking out right now, waiting for me to drop mud down the cylinder head bolt hole? <laughs> Dirt dauber nest roulette. It's amazing, folks. We have sunshine today. Can you believe it? It's actually a sunny day. Seriously, it's been cloudy for... Oh, it's been cloudy for probably... Three weeks straight. Talk about people with seasonal affective depression or seasonal 
whatever that is, seasonal sadness from no sunshine, plus a lack of vitamin D, isn't really good for you. Vitamin D does wonders for the body, apparently. Jeez. Good barb. This little guy is going back on here. Yep, right where you belong. I mean, there's really no way around mashing that shutoff valve into the starter motor. I think the shutoff valve is aftermarket. Now that we've <laughs> put all this time into, into fixing the dang thing. So with all the holes lined up, that's how that's supposed to go. Tell me how that's supposed to work. I suppose what we could do is one, lift this up so that it sits considerably higher. Essentially what I'm doing is pulling these out a little bit. The right thing would be to replace the entire fuel line, but I don't want to replace the entire fuel line. So we're just gonna do a little tug tug. So I did that there and I did it on the carb side as well. So now if they line up a little bit better, which they sort of do. You guys all right? Hope I didn't hurt your toes. The first part on there. Oh, need my pliers and some more hands. You guys got a hand out there? Someone's probably clapping for me right now. Here's your hand. Back on there you go. Yep. Still touches a little bit, but overall I think we're in better shape. Ugh, man, those are nasty. All right, I'm gonna go clean those up. Be right back. Notice anything removed? Like the starter? One of these went down in the engine. <laughs> it's a spacer for the, the plate and the cylinder head. As soon as I noticed it was gone, I was like, well, that's definitely fallen down into this crazy maze of heat shields. There we go. Okay, well, those threads are officially gone. 100% gone. Bolt's okay. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna go see if I can find something with a little more girth. Found a girthier bolt. Might be too girthy, but we're gonna see what we can do. This is turning into quite the project, if I do say so. You guys wondering when I was gonna drill through the cylinder wall? <laughs> now we're getting some. I see threads, and they're looking nice. Yeah, let's get you in on the action a little bit. Oh, yeah, you don't really care about that, do you? Oh, yeah, look at those. Normally, if this were just a heat shield bolt, probably wouldn't care at all. But considering the fact that we are supporting the starter motor with this, probably a good idea to put something a little more heavy duty in here. Know what I mean, Vern? I gotta tell you, I do not like drilling and tapping, it makes me very nervous. Because the last thing you need to do is break off your tap, and then what? And then your SOL. They also, do not have the best taps and dies. I'm gonna keep working at it. I'll bring you back. Funny story. That tap that I was using turns out it's just really bad quality. <laughs> I, I found a different one of better quality and I blew right through that and tapped it out really easy. So, lesson learned. Okay, holy moly. Talk about a process. Let's clean you up there, sweetheart. Hopefully, this bolt is short enough. Nope. Too long. Can someone explain to me why bumpers are so magical? My wife drove all over the place today and the flap that covers up the connector for the trailer harness stayed there. I remember when I was younger, 
I put a cup, a cup on my dad's bumper. And he drove all over the place, came back, and the cup was still there. I don't get it. Someone help me. All right, folks. <clears throat> Here's the scoop. I'm supposed to get three to six inches of snow tomorrow. I don't know about you, but I am excited. Because that means we get to test out this sweetheart. All right. I shaved off the end of the bolt. It's in good shape. I'm going to put some of this on the threads because I feel like it's a good thing to do. There we go. Just a little bit. Smells like blueberries. Well, that was exhausting. <laughs>